Rushy fields are a familiar sight across farmland on the island of Ireland. Our wet climate and our poorly draining soils are the perfect breeding ground for soft rush. But these plants present constant challenges for our farmers and sometimes the methods used have unintended impacts on our rivers and lakes. Choosing how and when to treat rushes can affect how successful the control methods are and what impact they have on our watery environment. So let's find out a little more about different types of rush control and how we can protect our rivers. So Terence, can you tell us about soft rush? What is it and, and how does it grow? Well, soft rush is not unique to this country. In fact, it's found in most countries throughout the world and it is associated mostly with wet or waterlogged soils or poorly drained soils and also soils of low fertility and high acidity. So this is a soft rush plant that we've dug up earlier and you can see the underground rhizome system which sends up these stems. They're not leaves, they're stems and the stems can reach about a metre, a metre and a half in height and near the top of the stem we can see the seed head here, the brown seed head. Now it's been estimated that over the lifetime of one of the uh, rush plants, an individual plant can produce up to 700,000 seeds. And these seeds can survive in the soil, can lie dormant in the soil for up to 60 years. So why do rushes have to be controlled by farmers in the first place? Well, there are two reasons why rushes need to be controlled. Uh, number one, they are of low palatability and very poor digestibility by livestock. So they're much less useful nutritionally to stock than say grass or clover. And the second reason is that areas covered by dense or impenetrable rush are ineligible for payment under land-based schemes. So about six weeks ago you came to this very rushy field and you prepared some plots to compare different rush control methods. Tell us what you did and what you found. Mm -hmm. Well after trialling various methods over some years we focused really on two rush control strategies in this field. One plot we cut uh, for the last two years, in other words we topped it in 2020 and then it was topped again in 2021. And the second plot we topped in 2020 and then we weed wiped with glyphosate about six weeks ago. You mentioned weed wiping. Can you talk us through the weed wiping process? Well, weed wiping is just a bit like applying paint using a roller. Only the parts, only those plants which are touched by the glyphosate in this case will actually be killed by it. And a very important point to make here if you're going to do weed wiping is to graze between the rush plants as tightly as you can beforehand and then you come along with the weed wiper which is raised a little bit above ground level and the weed wiper will only hit the rush which is the, the stock won't eat and is standing taller than the, than the other plants. Glyphosate is the herbicide that's used in weed wipers. It's important to note that MCPA is not licensed for use in weed wipers. Is there a particular season for weed wiping? Well, as glyphosate, the herbicide we're talking about, is taken up into the leaves and then translocated right through the plant, it's best carried out in the summer months. Uh, but it is important to note that that treatment should be delayed until after the 15th of July, where there's breeding waders using the site to allow the fledglings to escape. And also I should point out that in some of the agri-environment schemes, for example in the environmental farming scheme, chemical control is not allowed on any breeding waders site. Rushes there have to be controlled by cutting only. It's important to note that either a licensed contractor or a trained operator should be used in the application of glyphosate using a weed wiper. And also it is preferable to use a quad since these rushes are on wet sites heavy agricultural machinery is going to track the soil and open up spaces and allow the seeds to germinate. 
So here we are, Terence. you know, at the weed wiped mm. field six weeks on and you can see the difference already. Um, what benefits would you say weed wiping has compared to other methods? Well, the weed wiping with glyphosate has been the most effective on this particular site. And as you look across, you can see about 80% of the rushes have been killed here, which we're very, very pleased with. Uh, the other important point to make is that weed wiping with the herbicide glyphosate is much preferable to using MCPA because MCPA persists far longer in the environment, particularly in the water environment, than does glyphosate. MCPA can persist for up to three to four weeks, whereas glyphosate is broken down in three to seven days. Another benefit of using glyphosate applied using a weed wiper is that far less of the chemical is used compared to if you were using a boom sprayer. In fact, I've researched that about one eighth of the total volume of herbicide is used compared to using a boom sprayer. So Donal, I understand that a lot of farmers use herbicides like MCPA to control the rushes, but why is it so important that we encourage them to use weed wiping instead? Yes, sir. Um, we encourage them to use weed wiping because it's a more effective uh, method of controlling rushes and uh, uh, killing them. Uh, MCP, as you know, is a, is a very unstable product and one drop of it can affect uh, 30 kilometres distance of a uh, water course. Um, the boom sprayer it can affect the hedgerows uh, around and also the, with the drift getting into, into the water course. The weed wiper with the glyphosate is a more targeted and as I said an effective approach for uh, killing rushes. So here we are at the plot where the rushes have been topped. Can you tell us how effective topping is compared to other methods? Topping is a very effective method of controlling rushes in pasture but to control them by uh, topping only, you would have to top at least six times a year. And this is not uh, feasible uh, from a financial point of view. It is more effective to top and then come in with your weed wiper uh, and chemical to control the rushes. Are there other ways of dealing with rushes without using herbicides and which methods would you say would be the most effective? Yes, there is other methods there for uh, treating and uh, controlling rushes in pasture land. The, uh, first of all, I'd look at what's causing the, uh, the rush growth and basically that's rushes favour wet soils. So we have to look at the drainage uh, uh, system that needs to be put in place to reduce the water table. Topping and mulching is another uh, method of controlling uh, rushes in, uh, on pasture land. I'd also look at, which I think is very important, is soil sampling and soil testing your ground to know the current status of the soil itself. And we always target a, for good grassland management a pH of 6 or above it, and that will not favour rush growth. They, these methods will, will help reduce the rush population and be very cost effective to the farmer. And any advice on how to increase the pH? Yes, uh, what uh, you do is you, you apply lime to the, to the soil. Now in this type of ground here I wouldn't be applying more than two, two and a half tonne to the hectare, to the acre at a time. And how does the farm business benefit from these changes to land management practice? Well, as I said, you get a better uh, pasture produ production with the reduction of uh, rust infestation and the gra uh, grassland. You get a better performance from the animals through better grazing management and um, tighter grazing by the animals. You get a, uh, an improved water quality through less nutrients getting into the water and chemicals from the boom sprayer in, uh, versus the weed wiper. You also get a reduction in soil compaction with less machinery coming in on the ground. So there you have it. Rush control is a necessary land management practice, but by making small changes to how it's done can save time, money and help the environment. These changes can also protect your drinking water supplies, as well as making sure that your farm is productive.